Time for a corn update. This is my Flint corn field. And it is about, I think it's July 20th, July 19th. Um, and some of my corn in the Flint corn patch is starting to tassel. And so that's an exciting development. Uh, we just had a pretty big thunderstorm. We got about two inches of rain. There was a lot of wind. And you can kind of see that there's a little bit of lodging that happened. See, this guy fell over, got knocked over. Uh, corn knocked over here, corn knocked over there. So I may come in here and remove the lodged individuals because that kind of indicates weakness that we don't want. This row right here is the new corns that I'm adding in this year. And starting right here are from this end of the row is where the first seeded stuff that I transplanted um, got started and um, which was in the first seeding video. And this, starting right here, this is the chapalote. And you can see none of it fell over. And one of the reasons I was very interested in chapalote was because Frank Kutka had recommended it as being extremely well rooted. And that appears to be the case because it is standing tall, even though it is the largest corn in the patch right now, it is extremely robust. Um, so I'm pretty pleased with that. That's a good indication that it might be a great corn to keep in the patch. One thing you can see, it does tiller like crazy. If you, you see this one's got one, two, three tillers here. And then you can see it's sending out some prop roots down there. Um, here's one with a couple of tillers. But on average, these are just huge and robust plants. And so I'm pretty excited about them. So here's more chapalote. Look at this guy. Look at all these tillers. So that's not a trait that I'm crazy about. One, two, three five tillers that's a lot of tillers but i'll take it for now and then now we're switching and this is the tarahumara and this stuff is interesting too as you can see it's already tasseled and it's already pushing out silk so this tarahumara i believe it was tarahumara Maiz Cristalino that I bought from Native Seed Search. And it is clearly very fast, short season corn. And it's doing quite well. Uh, you can see one of them has fallen over here. So what I've done with this Tarahumara is I started detasseling. So you can see here, when it first started, um, showing tassels, I just started detasseling it because I did not want it pollinating my corn, but then I realized it's not going to overlap very much. But if you look further out in the patch here, this is the next row over, there's a tassel starting to show. So it's time to cut these tassels off of this Tarahumara because I do not want this pollen contaminating my flint corn. So normally when you're detasseling, you're not using clippers like this because uh, I might because you're just pulling. Um, if you were going to detassel like this guy right here, you could just basically this is a perfect stage for detasseling. Um, because the tassel has not started to shed pollen yet. There's no anthers, you know, and it's still kind of half wrapped up in this top leaf. So you would just grab this entire thing and yank up and it will snap. You don't want to do that, well, in my personal opinion, it's kind of uh, a judgment call, but if the tassel is further down in the whirl, 
and you and you yank like that, what you'll often do is break off three, two, three more of these top leaves because everything is so deep in the whorl and so tightly packed together that you actually just snap the rest of it off by friction. So that's something to avoid if you can, but you don't want to wait so long that it starts shedding pollen. So it's kind of a judgment call and you got to kind of get used to your specific corn. But um, yeah, I'm very excited about these new corns that I'm bringing in. And so that's the end of the chapalote right there. And then this stuff is the onaveña, which is, seems to be more similar to the chapalote. You know, there's a lot of tassels. I mean, sorry, not tassels. There's a lot of tillers, as you can see. It's not quite as tall or as big or as green, but it's doing pretty well. I'm very happy with it. Um, the Tarahumara is the most obviously different of the other three, of the three new corns in the patch. And I'm pretty excited about it as well. You can see there's some pink and purple silk on some of these guys. Now, if you're growing corn belt dent, you'll oftentimes read that pink silks are an indication of nutrient deficiency. That, and I can't rep I think it's phosphorus. It's either phosphorus or potassium. But with corns like this that are genetically diverse, there's just uh, other genes that control, you know, the color of the silks. And so I would say the reason this one is pink and this one is not has more to do with the mixed up genetics of the corn rather than anything to do with uh, um, a nutrient deficiency. So I have basically hand pollinated these ears that are coming out on the Tarahumara. I collected the pollen from those tassels I just cut off and hand pollinated all of these. And then you can see I cut the ear leaf off about six inches away from the ear just to mark these as hand pollinated and I will keep these ears separate because they're going to be you know pure tarahumara oh there's another one I miss this this guy um, those are going to be pure tarahumara seed and they're going to um, have to be kept separate and any other ears that come out after this will be most likely pollinated by the corn that uh, is starting to tassel right now. And you can see that storm gave me a lot of damage. And so I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna wait and see. Some of these corns will pick themselves back up and the ones that stay laying down, like I think I see one over here, like this guy looks like it's maybe completely snapped off. I will come through and just call those out, you know, because you can look at it two ways. You can look at it as saying, oh, my corn pl planting just got ruined. Or you can say, oh, that thunderstorm just did a great job helping me select for stronger stalks and stronger roots, you know, because it just did a great job picking winners and losers, you know, because here's this corn plant that's standing tall and this guy right next to it that, you know, got knocked over. So this guy maybe deserves to stay in the plant into the population and kept for seed next year. And maybe this guy doesn't get to, you know, I'll just feed him to the cows. So you gotta take the good with the bad. And it was a pretty intense little storm, but uh, a lot of the corn is still standing. One thing that I'm seeing is the chapalote has did not even budge it's just standing tall you know and it's the tallest stuff in the patch and so it was gonna have you know direct impact by the wind with the most leverage and yet none of it fell over so that is an indication to me that yeah it's got really strong stalks really strong roots i'd love to include that in my population you can see there's the cow peas just getting going right there this guy right here this guy right here so they will start to vine pretty quickly and grow and climb the corn so um what else do i want to mention here you can see here's a leafy shoot 
the leafy shoots on the end of the corn husks here that are that the silks have to emerge from and modern like corn belt dents have pretty much eliminated that so you know if, if you think about the a corn husk a whole ear of corn is basically just a modified corn stalk so if this is um this you know this this if you think of the stem as like the center of the cob um the husks are basically just modified leaves so it, when you think about a corn leaf this is what you're oh who are you hello um if you think about a corn leaf the leaf has this prominent rib whereas the sheath doesn't and so a corn husk is actually just a sheath and then there's usually little or no leaf on the structure but some of these tarahumara as you can see are really leafy on their ear shoots you know and that's a unusual trait but you do see it from time to time in you know less domesticated uh corns so just something to mention it doesn't really i guess matter one way or the other so here see this guy he just sort of almost tripped on it it's completely this root system was inadequate for uh the conditions and that's too bad i don't know if maybe there's some rootworm in there or what but it easily got knocked over and i want corn that's gonna hold up a lot better than that so i'm just gonna you know toss this to the cows all right so that's the flint corn progress so far we're just gonna get some here's the first of the direct seeded corns are you know starting to tassel there's the ear shoots there you can see they're a little bit leafy so um i wish the corn was a little greener I wish there weren't so many weeds, but you know, this is what happens in your side projects. Um, I'm really excited about this, you know, patch of flint corn overall, and I'm very, very interested to see what these Mexican corns are going to look like this year. So, all right, that's the corn thus far, just about starting uh, flowering. Okay.